Death Talk, episode 17. I have the group all back this week. We'll start off with Chris, because Chris, you missed last week. You're back, though. Yep, I'm back. Uh, so, Chris, what uh, what happened last week? Yeah, I was going to say, is the diarrhea all cleared up now? It w- no, it wasn't even that. I just <laughs> So, it's my not cleared up. Are you feeling all right today? To <laughs> we just want to make sure you're okay. No, I I was good. I just want I had some work to do. I was a little stressed out okay. cuz you weren't answering anxious, the, you weren't answering so. the phone either. So we just wanted to make sure yeah, everything put was on, okay. Yeah, put on I think my phone was on uh do not disturb, so Okay. I, I don't know, but All right, I just want to make sure you're doing all right. Yeah, I'm good. I all just right. was trying to avoid all of you. And... Oh, jeez. And um Mark, Mark is here as well. He has the sniffles. Hey, I do. That is a fact. Where did you Where did you get this sickness from, Mark? Nature. <laughs> You're just out in I nature. Said, I said no. I don't know. I I like came into work today and I couldn't stop sneezing. It oh. wasn't like this last night, so I don't know. Well, unless uh, yeah, it was just allergies. I think. You're a trooper, Mark. Thanks for uh, Thanks for uh, getting on the uh, podcast. Unlike Chris, oh. who couldn't handle the pressure last weekend, <laughs> last week. I'm, so, I'm sorry that I wanted to do my job. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Do things, but it's okay. <laughs> and uh, the one and only uh, Caleb. Caleb is here too. Hey. Hey, hi, You're Caleb. again. Good to have you back. Well, I love it when you lie to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, as always, we're going to go over to Mark in the newsroom. We got lots to talk about. We got news. We got cool new tunes. We got another film tour stuff we got some good feedback so uh we got some questions to answer too so but um first uh mark take it over give us the awesome. news so we got some uh some cool new stuff to talk about uh this week the chrome over brass self-titled lp just got announced earlier this week with a uh a song on our website uh you can check it out it's alex garcia rivera from american nightmares the drummer also filled in with a bunch of other bands and i read that he is a drum technician for a lot of recordings as well uh this is an instrumental record where he plays all of the instruments on it and it sounds really good we've listened to it a few times here uh that does not have a date yet but keep an eye out. I'm sure we'll talk about it here once that can, once that gets announced. But it should be really cool. It's a it's a different sort of vibe from all the other stuff we've put out. We haven't really put out an instrumental record, so not for uh, a while at least. Yeah, so it should be really cool. Uh, another reminder that Coliseum's new album Anxiety's Kiss is out now. It's available on a uh, LP, CD, and cassette wherever you like to buy music. Also on iTunes and Spotify and RDO and all that jazz. Um, stream new, away. Mark loves the stream. Do love the stream. Streaming audio, streaming video, yeah. streaming... Mark the streamer. Yeah. Mark the streamer. Um, yeah, so there's a new Self-Defense Family music video for the song Talia, which was a Record Store Day 7-inch that we sold on Record Store Day. We still have plenty of copies in our e-store, so you should... Uh, pick that up with the b-side of a song called taxiing uh talia's from their upcoming lp called heaven is earth which is out on june 30th yeah. uh the mu- music video the- is really cool it's on yeah. the death wish youtube now the seven inches is limited to only a thousand copies and we're never gonna press it again so um if you want that to add to your mountain of self-defense family records um you should pick that up uh the b-side's exclusive so you're never gonna see that on another record again so um go pick it up while you still can yep and um one last thing we have a uh 10 for 10 cd sale going on in our store right now and it's gonna end on monday right caleb Mm -hmm. one week only yeah so this will get posted on our friday so this weekend uh buy buy a couple we have a lot of cds and uh there's plenty of cds to go around so for ten dollars you'll get 10 cds that's one dollar a cd ladies ladies and gentlemen can't uh, beat it. Yeah, Caleb, can you can you explain can, to people how it works? Like, what um, if they order the ten for ten kind of thing? Like, what what do they actually get? So basically, you get we try not to double up, um, and it's it includes every CD from our catalog. This also includes uh, malfunction releases, um, perfect uh, perfect victim releases, and of course ours. So we try and Icarus. 
and Icarus. Um, Keep your fingers crossed you get that Half Acre Gun Room album. That shit is fire. It's seriously <laughs> I, really good. I've been listening to it all the time. Um, it's an ultimate late pass. I honestly don't think we have any of those CDs left. But No, we do. I, I There's like 10 of them. Okay. And you could win the lottery. It's like it's like it's like winning the lottery if you get that half acre gun room CD. But yeah, it's it's randomly selected. Um we try not to double up anything. If you order two, you'll get twenty CDs. If you order three, you'll get thirty. And um like I said, we try not to double up until we absolutely have to. So Yeah, and it's a dollar. It's a dollar a CD. And I think like if you order in the US, it's only like four dollars to ship media mail. So literally you're paying fourteen dollars, right? To, yes. to uh to uh or maybe a little under 15 to uh get 10 cds so yeah it's an awesome deal you it's like that it. it's like that uh it's like that uh thing do you remember back in the day when like you'd see a commercial to like buy a bunch of cds like like a like a subscription to like a cd thing do you guys not remember this columbia house columbia For special Columbia House offers this month in selected magazines, newspapers, and your mail. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> It's like get 50 cds for 50 dollars oh yeah it's not like that at all but uh, it just reminded me of that i've seen those commercials when i was younger uh we have to we'll have to find some a uh, youtube video of, of the commercial so chris add that to the show notes please okay i we, we could just add it to the youtube thing or whatever <laughs> or... yeah yeah find 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 that find that uh commercial for me okay cool all right we'll do all right cool um is that it for news mark that's it all right, cool. Um, so, thanks for the news, Mark. I forgot to even thank you for the news. Oh, you did a great yeah. job on the news. Thank you very much. So, there was this article um, online. I think Caleb found it. It was about uh, delays and things like that happening in the uh, in the vinyl world. And uh, we're kind of after Record Store Day, uh, and uh, you would hope things will get back, you know, to uh, some better turnaround times, but from some of the things in this article, and we'll include it in the show notes so you guys can listen to, it's from uh, factmag.com. Uh, it looks as though that the uh, things aren't going to get much better, but I mean, hope, we, we hope that they will. But uh, if you didn't know, uh, you know, obviously I think a lot of people do know this that are fans of the label and uh, just fans of music in general, uh, but there's huge delays at pressing plants and uh, this article kind of uh, gives a different perspective on why there is delays. A lot of people think that um, it's just like they can't they can't press records fast enough. There's just too many records to press, and while that's that's true, uh, there's not there's not enough plants to press the amount of records that people want in a timely fashion. Um, there's there's a lot of other factors that go into it, so. Uh, like a couple, a couple things on this article is that a lot of the, the actual um, parts and pieces that make up the machines uh, can be very difficult to repair if they do break. There's actually not a lot of uh, people that can actually repair it uh, that are uh, in the world. So uh, they, they, they mention actually one guy in Japan that makes lacquers uh there's only two apparently there's only two suppliers of, of lacquers in the world so uh i don't know if that's true or not i mean this is this is what the article is 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 saying uh but i can't i can't uh tell you for sure if that's absolutely true someone might tell you like oh that's that's no that's not true at all there's way more suppliers but um yeah there's one person in japan that makes the lacquers that they can make records with so um and if, if, if for some reason uh, things get delayed or this guy can't uh, get, make enough lacquers in time, then a whole press could be delayed. And a lot of it, too, is that uh, labels are going back and repressing older catalog items. So it's 
difficult for new records to come out when they're trying to uh, press back catalog of records that have been out of print forever, and now they're taking up some time on the um, on the presses. Uh, well, it's also um, like major labels now are like pressing records again, and and obviously they they press a lot more records than than we do or like other labels as well. So, I mean, they're they're taking up a lot of space in the in the pressing plants. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a lot of people are. Um, I don't know how to say it. Uh, it's kind of like the the indies and 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 these smaller labels were can't kind of keeping the the plants afloat for the past I don't know ten fifteen years. Well, maybe more than that twenty years since vinyl has decreased in sales over that time, and now they're kind of getting uh, pushed out. So it's 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 difficult because these uh, these major labels are taking over a lot of the uh the time and and small labels like us and you know uh, a lot of the even larger indies still can't get that that dedicated time and on a personal note i i mean you know i do the production here at deathwish so um it is my job to keep <laughs> to keep uh jobs on time and I have them come out in a, in a timely manner and it's it's been extremely difficult um, we do our best to uh, make sure that and we, we, we don't we, we try to be as realistic as possible so we don't want to set a wrong expectation for um, for our customers that they're going to get a record when it really will will it could be delayed quite a bit so we try to keep a realistic expectation but there, you know, there's been times where we've been right down to the wire getting records, you know, the day before we're ready to ship them out, you know. So, um, it's been it's been extremely difficult uh, to keep any sort of schedule for releases and street dates, and that's another thing too. Um, to schedule a street date uh, with with a with a distributor or you know or with iTunes or whatever Spotify and anything like that. Um, uh, we need to actually have product in hand, so the vinyl actually affects when our street date is set. So we can't set a street date until we know we're going to have vinyl in hand because it's one of our biggest formats. It probably is our biggest format. Um, so it's it's it it affects everything. It affects the seat when the CD comes out. It affects when everything goes on iTunes and Spotify. Um, so it's actually delaying not just the vinyl record itself, but everything that goes along with it. Yeah, so, I think like turnaround times are now up to like sixteen weeks. Is that right? Yeah, Somewhere domestically, domestically, you're looking at four to five months from when you approve a test press right now. Yeah. So any plant in the U.S., most of them, you know, there's there's a lot out there that might tell you a little bit different, but generally we've been we've been seeing four to five months. Um, anywhere outside the U.S., you can typically get them done a little bit quicker, but even them, they are now seeing delays. So, um, it's yeah. yeah it's I think, just uh, I actually just got uh, like notified from somebody at A to Z, and they told me uh, 16 weeks at GZ, which is in the Czech Republic, and that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> and that's from the approved like test press. So yeah, not from when you put the after order. In. You approve the test press, so that's like, and test presses take what like a few weeks. So yeah, yeah, two I to mean, three weeks probably. Yeah, yeah. So that that's where we're at, and you know, it's it's gonna be something we're gonna have to deal with in the future. But um, hopefully things turn around, and and uh, like I said, like you know, we've we've always sold vinyl, and that's not gonna. It's not going to go away. You know, we're always going to sell records, I think. I think people always, people like records. People will always like records. You listen to a record for a certain reason, and, you know, that's really not going to go away. So, um, hopefully things will improve. And and once, you know, hopefully the labels, the, the major labels will uh, uh, get enough of doing all these crazy reissues of back catalog and, um give some more time back to the to, to the indies to press cool new records um but yeah good any any other points before we uh, wrap this up i think you got it good 
All right, cool. Cool. Um, besides that, uh, we uh, we went to a gig the other night. Sure did. <laughs> we went to go see um, Pianos Become the Teeth, Loma Prieta, and uh, Gates on, on their tour. It was at the uh, Middle East downstairs. I got... Um, uh, do you know that little platform that you go up? There's like this little platform that only 21 plus people are allowed on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's a bar there, but there's actually a well, there's a bar on the floor too because, but that wasn't even open. I don't believe. Yeah, they don't use it. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's only open during 21 plus shows. But um, guy didn't think I was 21. No. Yeah, I get that a lot too. So. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's dark sick. in there, I guess. I'm just good. I'm just a good-looking young guy. I Dude, mean, it must be that yoga. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Is. <laughs> it's all about yoga. It's keeping keep me just young. You just keep me young. But uh, yeah, um, I caught the entire show. I was there from the beginning to the end. Were you guys all there for the whole show? Yeah. Cool. You stayed the whole time. Cool. It was awesome. Uh, uh, Loma played. They played a lot of. Uh, well, they played a few of their new songs from the new album that they uh, just completed. Which will be coming out in the future. <laughs> details, <laughs> details will soon. be released when we can. <laughs> Still working those out, but um, it's awesome. Though we're all really excited about it. Yeah, it's it's really it's really cool. Uh, I loved their kind of uh, their like aesthetic on stage. Like they were just like a kind of like a like a light, you know, kind of shining on them from the ground. That was kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. And they yeah. just play everything straight through, no breaks. Well, I mean, they take tuning breaks, but they have like little loops going and stuff. So. I always yeah, love when don't... bands have that together, when they have, like, an actual set as opposed, like, all right, what are we playing next? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, they kind of keep it, like, talking to a minimum, too. I, I kind of like that, and they just, like, they just play. It's it's awesome. Yeah, it was loud and fast, and it was really cool. I enjoyed the show. Yeah, I, I always like seeing them play. It's, it's always really good. Yeah, I've only, uh, I've seen them play the Democracy Center around here. I think uh, twice I actually. Well. I don't remember. I don't think I've seen them anywhere else though. So I've seen them play there twice, but um, it was. Okay, well, you you I saw said them play you at the Met them. in uh, Pawtucket. Right oh, nice, there. nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but yeah, we all, all had a good time. Uh, anything? Anything cool happened in the show? Nah, it was a. I don't know. It was when was it? Wednesday night or Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, you said Wednesday. Sorry, Tuesday. Wednesday or Tuesday. Uh, it was Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, yes, it was Tuesday. Remember that awesome kid clapping? Oh, Yo, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> just kid clapping to Some the music. Kid. It was sick. He was just all alone, just grooving and just clapping. Clapping to pianos. Fun. But the, the thing about it was he was like a beat late. Like, whenever people clap along, they're always so off. Oh, that mm-hmm. frustrates me a lot. Oh, when you like you nuts. When the crowd is off from the rest of the band. Yeah. That's that's infuriating. Yeah, he started off. He was he was on it. He was good, and then he just slowly started to get slower and slower. I don't know if it was because he he was realizing like, oh wait, this is embarrassing that I'm doing this, or if he just got distracted. I don't know what was going on. The best he started part too off is strong. That we were like near the back of the venue, so the music wasn't as loud as if we were closer. So the clapping was. As loud or louder than the band. <laughs> yeah. It was so some distracting. People, some people just need to clap, man. No, I but he was like being like he was kind of just flailing his arms and like it was a very lazy clapping. That's how he that's on. how he expresses Yo, himself. How crazy is it that if you do something on stage, then a people like clap, they just like fucking slap their hands together and that's like a sign of approval. Isn't that fucking wild? Brought what to you, you by Mark Stoner moment of the day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mark. Whatever. That should be like a new segment. Do you want everyone to like bow or like? No, I mean a that, it's a it's a good way to show approval. It's just like if you just break it down and just think about just slapping two body parts together, and it's everyone's just like, yeah, this is what you do when something's good. It's like fucking. It's like kind of like universal too. Like people just yeah. to do it. It's weird. What like if- any you can go to any country and clap, and people will know what that is. What dude, people, clapping is the universal language, dude. What if Are people sure just did uh, jazz hands when when they're approved of something? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that'd be sick. Just that's silence. Cool. You look out and everyone's just jangling their fingers. <laughs> that's what Caleb does. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm actually yeah. like a big, big, uh, big fan of uh, jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, I see you doing jazz hands quite Spe- often. In your speaking, office. speaking of about signs of approval, Rich absolutely loves pianos. During their set, he was pacing back and forth. I just don't like standing in one spot for too long. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. I was like. Like I look over like at Rich and then like I look away and then look back and he's like gone. I, I just like, don't I, I I don't like standing. I I I think I have some sort of like I know I just like can't sit still, sort of thing. Like how I'm rocking on my chair right now. Um, maybe you have ADHD. I, it's quite possible, but uh, <laughs> I know what you mean. I I tend to walk around shows too. Yeah, I, I, I like, like to, to just stand yeah, in I the like same to experience spot. some different angles. You know, maybe yeah, uh, I mean, cool guy, rich. You know, gonna walk around. And I, I like to get cool. up close to the stage and post up. That's what I do, as well. Well, that's great. I like to st- I like to stand <laughs> in the back. I like to see the whole thing. I like to see everything going on. Um, but uh, yeah. That was a good show. So I think is the is there is there Chris? Is there many dates left on that tour? Do you know? Uh, there's a maybe like two more dates. Okay. Yeah, so by, it, by the time this you posted, it, it's probably over. Yeah, over, it's probably yeah. over. So you missed your chance to see that tour. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, so it was great. Uh, so go see Loma if you can next time they're in your town. Uh, Mark, What's it's up? time for cool new tunes. You need to bring us in, and Caleb's going to do the cool new tunes. Are you... <laughs> wait, wait, hey, that was, that was way different than... Succulent. That was a, that was a new rendition. I'm just trying that to keep cool. things exciting. It's like, a, it's like a marriage after, like, eight years, just trying to keep it exciting. You know when, you know, like, if a, like a singer, like, <laughs> like... <laughs> I can't believe you know? I said that. <laughs> You know, if, like, a singer, like, I don't know, like, Mariah Carey or something was, like, sick, like, she'd be drinking tea and, like, trying to get ready. You know, I'm yep. surprised you didn't do anything to prepare for cool new tunes today. Oh, he doesn't need to. With a voice have... like that, it doesn't matter. Allergies can attack. It still sounds great. Well, it's just, it's a shame that I got allergies today on Thursday, the day we're recording, because all the two weeks leading up to every recording, I do vocal warm-up 6 a.m. to 8.35 <laughs> a.m., just preparing for my bi-weekly performance, and then typically every other Thursday, I just do vocal rest, so I don't really talk too much. Like, you guys are probably wondering, like, oh, Mark's really quiet. No, I'm just honing my no, craft. I just, I just assumed that you were just sad that day and didn't want to talk to any of us i'm just honing my craft just making sure that i can give the best i can to the american people just putting some stank on what about the international people um i'll do pretty good for them but i'm looking out for the american people (laughs) here all about america fourth of july is coming up soon so (laughs) it's like a month and a half (laughs) dude you gotta get ready for it though rich is already dreaming about sack toss (laughs) Yes. <laughs> sack toss? Yo, what the hell yeah. is sack toss? Or cornhole. Is that? cornhole. Oh, cornhole. Cornhole sack and toss. sack toss is totally different. Oh, those are, are two they? different things? All right, well, that's, I like, guess, that's like I calling guess we're baseball. Are, like, you, uh, are you talking about bag to- toss? <laughs> that, that's, that's what he what said. <laughs> I said sack toss. It's cornhole. Bag toss and sack toss are both stupid. It's cornhole. Okay, explain the difference. Whatever. Really quick. Whatever. Uh, one's a game and one's just like if you woke up from a eight year like slumber and you're like okay so for the first to... cool new tune we have the uh... <laughs> <laughs> yep this has gone off the rails as usual oh Mark's so mad he's 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 muted all right he cut out he cut out all right Caleb give us those sorry cool Mark new I, tunes. I love you uh so we got the latest release from Radio Raheem. Um, agnostic front known rules um, and this thing is awesome it comes with a, uh, a 48 page booklet and a it's a collection of, it's a collection yes, yes, yes it's um 34 tracks from two different recording sessions I forget which ones but it's on the page you'll see so check it out that's a really awesome release we're excited about it it was also the distro title of the week just saying distro title um, of the week hashtag distro title of the week yep yep um, we also put up pre-orders for Citizen and Me Without You. Um, they have 
two new albums come they each have a new album coming out on run for cover and we are excited to have pre-orders up for both of them so we should be getting some cool posters stickers and i believe we're not getting the most common color we're getting the one next up above it so all that pressing information is on run for cover site and the colors we're getting are on our site so check those out we also got some cool live tapes from angel dust and mindset i believe these are both from their this is hardcore 2014 performances so those are up now those are cool um from mosher's delight and flat spot and we also got the latest seven inch from triple b it's the unified right self-titled seven inch uh and last but not least i don't know if I mentioned this last week, but we got Filmage, the Descendants documentary. So this is a DVD and Blu-ray. It's both in one, so you can't go wrong. Throw it in your laptop, throw it in your PlayStation, you know, take it take it on the go. Put it in your portable DVD player? Exactly. Your, you your, your yeah, P-DVD-P. While, while mom and dad drive you to grandma's house, you just sit in the back of the van with that, that portable DVD player and just learn about the Descendants, you know? Caleb, I'm going to get you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess you had a portable DVD player. Oh, hell yeah. Sick. Long drives as a kid. Only Nothing way I got like that through, portable man. DVD player. Mm-hmm. To shut you up. <laughs> no, I, I'd, get, I'd get really car sick, so any drive with me is just automatically... I go white, I break out in like a cold sweat and i don't say a word so <laughs> is this is this what's gonna happen is this is what's that gonna why happen you drive all the time when that is that is part of the reason thing? i drive all the time everyone take road trips with caleb it's a lot of fun it he drives all is. Time. it's a good time if I, if I don't drive i f- feel really sick it sucks so who's wait which who's going to blood fest just just you caleb you and mark and chris yeah are, 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 all, are all you guys going uh i don't know about chris yet Okay, maybe maybe Chris, but Mark's going. Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. That, that, <laughs> that should, should just cur- just curious. All right. Yeah, yeah. I just wondered. Um, we should, we should just talk about all these things on the podcast. Just air them out. Make sure we're get we yeah. got business. I mean, straight we haven't here. discussed it yet, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, um, Caleb, we're going to do your yearly review on the podcast ne- next episode. So. All right. Let's. Sick. That would be cool. Is, <laughs> is Trey and Jake gonna come on? Yeah. 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 We're gonna are. call them. And yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be totally devastating. <laughs> All right. No, I'm confident. I'm confident. I've been doing good. Let's do this. Cool. Is that it for cool new tunes? <laughs> yes. All right, awesome. Uh, and now it's time for everyone's favorite segment, uh, Film School with Rich. That's Film me. School, excellent. Party, Party time. time. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. This one time, uh, I thought I was just really sick. I got nothing. I'm sorry. I tried to quote something, but I got nothing. Please edit okay. that out. I, Please edit that out. <laughs> that that has to stay in just for continuity. Sorry, Mark. So, Film School with Rich is this part of the show where uh, Caleb makes me watch movies because I don't watch movies, and I think they're boring. Um, well, that's not true. <laughs> no, no. Now, <laughs> now I'm a movie buff. I know all of I know all the you'll, movies. You'll get there. And uh, this segment of the show is brought to you by Caleb in the Death Wish store. Caleb, mm-hmm. tell the kids what they can get this week. This week, you can get 10% off your entire order. That means you can order a sticker, 10% off. You can order 50 records, 10% off. How do they get that? <laughs> How do they get it, you say? Yeah. Thank you. Um, use the coupon code, what's in the box. One, One word, word, all capitals, no apostrophe. Okay. What's in the box? Stored and at deathwishing.com. And Rich, what is in the box? Well, in the box, <laughs> I, don't need, I, I don't know how to get. I don't know. What Gwyneth to do with Paltrow's that. head is in the box, Rich. Now you just spoiled it for everyone. Great. Right off the bat, I just want to ruin the end of every movie. Yeah. yeah. Every so let's week. talk about Seven. What'd let's you think? Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um. Oh, well, I was excited that you gave me a. Uh, a more modern movie. I know yeah, you, 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 you. What do you've you, been asking for? Something that didn't wasn't well, filmed you, in the seventies. Yeah, I don't think you gave me anything that was. Yeah, I think. Well, was Pulp Fiction in the nineties when you? Gave, yeah, yeah. Fargo was in the nineties, but yeah, the last so the last like kind of few I still ones didn't, were. 
I still don't really older. give you anything completely modern. Yeah, seven's yeah. ninety five. This was so. ninety five, so this was ninety five. <laughs> um, and this movie stars Morgan Freeman, mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, yes, Gwyneth Paltrow, mm-hmm. and last but not least, Kevin certainly Spacey. not least, oof, Kevin he was, Spacey. He came in, in late in the movie. I didn't, ninety I, minutes in and I, completely steals the show. Yeah, I had no idea he was even in the movie. Like I didn't they look actually, that up. They leave yeah. his name out of the opening credits so they don't spoil the surprise. Oh, really? No, speaking yep. of the opening credits, I really enjoyed the intro. I thought it was actually really good. It's a good intro. I'm so glad you said that. I was going to ask you about that because Fincher always has fucking awesome opening credits. Yeah, it, like, it, um... It's super 90s, but it still holds yeah, up. Yeah, it was longer and it left, like, it was a lot of questions because it, it was very mysterious of like what like mm-hmm. what was going on. It was like razor blades and like it's notebooks. Like, why why and is this like, dude? Well, did you see he was peeling his fingertips and sewing them into his his uh, his journals? Oh, I didn't even notice that. I mean, I did, but I mean, I yeah. I saw some of it. Yeah, but I didn't really put those together. But yeah, that makes sense. Well, I mean, you find it out later, and you're like, yeah. oh, that's what was going on. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, you know, basic ideas. If you haven't seen the movie, is that. Uh, Brad Pitt, who plays Mills, uh, what's his first name? I forget. Detective Mills. He's David. David. Yeah, whatever. Um, He's going to be replacing uh, Detective uh, Somerset. William Somerset. William Somerset. Uh, So they have to work together for a little bit before he actually replaces them, and you know, they get they get the last case. They get the last case. case, His first case. Well, not his first case. His first case on assignment in this city, this unnamed city. Yeah. So basically, there's all these murders happening, and they're kind of they're they're happening once a day for seven days, correct? Not quite once a day, but that's oh, I thought a basic that was gist. a thing. Okay. Well, I mean, some of them are ongoing for like the one dude was ongoing oh, for a oh, year. Oh, yeah, you're right. It, you're right. Yeah, it's it takes place over a week, I believe. You're you're on the right track. It's okay. close enough. Okay. It's not that important. Well, anyways. When now the uh, the large gentleman they found in the spaghetti sauce was <laughs> crazy and gross. Is that how you're gonna go out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pass out on my 3ds. You're just gonna find me face first in that. Uh, <laughs> um, the uh, the the I believe it was the second. Was it the second one they found? Where no, it was the third one actually. Because the second the second one was greed. They found mm-hmm. the, the second was a lawyer. Lawyer. The third one was the guy in like that that house that was like in the bed oh my god that scared the right? shit out of me so yeah did you did you have terrible nightmares last night or what that was that was fucked up like that was that was nasty that was gross <laughs> like and and then when he when he pops up he's alive holy shit was not expecting that at all mm-hmm. they were saying Seri- like seriously like this movie isn't like i mean it's fairly graphic but it's excuse me it's like mostly psychological and yes. it's like it's like yes deeply disturbing this is david fincher right yes yeah yeah this Um, is like sorry go on i'll talk about that later no but uh i was not expecting any that to that 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 happened at all um the uh the doctor after said they were kind of keeping him alive with like antibiotics like injections of antibiotics like that's Mm -hmm. just that was gross that was nasty it actually scared me like it, it scared me a lot yeah it's disturbing yeah, I, like, jumped out of my seat. I was like, oh, whoa, hey. Yeah, Mark doesn't... We, we we were talking about this movie last week when I assigned it or whatever. And Mark doesn't like horror movies and stuff. And he was asking me, is this like it? a... No, I don't think he did. Excuse me, sorry. Um, he said he doesn't like horror movies. And he was asking, is this, like, is this, like, a scary... Like, is this a horror movie? And I was like, uh... I don't know. Not no, quite. It's, it's not It's not at all. It just has, like, these certain parts that are just... Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call it a horror movie, but it's like like I keep saying, like it's it's deeply disturbing, like it's troubling. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like the movie's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, it's gory, but yeah, I don't know. It's not super gory though. I mean, like it doesn't I mean, actually show it, that part when they like the dudes like in the bed, like, and they, like. There's nothing gory about that though. He's just like covered in sores, you know. Yeah, it's kind of it's still kind of gory, but. But anyways, I yeah. That gory, but, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, okay. they found that Continue. they found that lady without like a face, like with no nose. Mm-hmm. But she's so all was, wrapped up. It didn't show it. Oh yeah. Every right, everything's right. implied in this. Not not right. everything, 
but most things are implied. Right. Like the murders aren't shown. Like yeah. you never see him actually murder anyone. Yeah. But anyways, this Kevin Spacey is ends up being the the, the complete psychopath killer guy, and um, he he's kind of plant. He's he's this is like his kind of thing. Like his he he did this whole story almost like he he wanted all these things to happen Mm -hmm. it's his masterpiece his masterpiece yeah this is how he would be remembered so uh gwyneth paltrow plays detective mills's uh wife and she's pregnant but he doesn't know about it Uh, Mm -hmm. she tells the the other detective detective somerset somerset um I, i guess i'm explaining a lot of the movie just because you know we want to talk about the end uh, yeah, the ending is basically why I wanted you to see this. Like the whole did- movie. So, so let me tell you this. While I enjoyed the movie, um, uh, I wasn't like I was. I was like wondering, like, why would Kayla like this is a this is an okay movie, but this is like I was just like this is just something you'd see on like you know TBS on 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 a Saturday afternoon. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it like what's so good about? It? I don't understand. You know. Um, well, well, but- I. I think the entire movie is great, but I don't quite agree the, with that. But I, payoff, I understand payoff, what you're saying. Yeah, the payoff was at the end, and when you know they bring her, they they go out to the. There's almost like this like desert sort of setting, or mm-hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, it's just Gwen's Paltrow's head. It's in a box. They don't show that though. Again, they don't. Yeah, they don't show yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, but I finally, I finally realized where the sample from What's the in first. The box? No, the first, uh, the first song off the uh, "Every Time I Die" record. Oh my god, I hate this city. Yeah, I never yes! knew where that was from. Yeah, I, I was watching it. And I was like, I wonder if Rich knows this or not. Oh, definitely. I didn't want to say definitely. anything. I'm so definitely. glad. That's awesome. Yeah, I finally realized that's from that record. I mean, from so- that movie. So, so you've so- never, you never heard like the "What's in the Box"? You never heard anyone say that. No, no. Huh. But that right. was great. That's like that... the most quoted thing like, yeah. that people say. There's like, there's, yeah, there's like a little meme, like a little what's in the box meme. I, whatever. I get, you haven't seen it, so whatever. It's no, I haven't. Um, but that, um, that, that scene was pretty powerful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was really good. The, um, um, suppose, supposedly the studios, this was a huge like argument with between the studios fincher and brad pitt they wanted to change the ending because obviously they weren't happy with the head in the box they wanted to take it out and then they wanted to switch it to like one of his dog's heads and they both argued to keep it in because it's obviously amazing it's kind of what makes a film yeah so, yeah i don't know why they wanted i mean they didn't maybe they did they show it initially I, I, it was just in the script, so so no. They were oh, just, okay, no. okay. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if that was like a thing where they wanted to show it or something and then couldn't, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, a different a different director probably would have shown it, and yeah. a, more of the violence probably would have been shown, but yeah. Fincher isn't as interested in that, I don't think. I see. Actually, we should... There's a really good um, YouTube series. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. Um, it's called Every Frame of Painting. And they did a one of the little I don't know what to call them not an episode but one of the videos is on Fincher's um, direction and it's really awesome. Well, I'll I'll send the link to Chris so it's in the show notes. But it's definitely cool, worth yeah, checking definitely out. It. What uh, d- just curious like what other movies has has David Fincher done? He's done so many, and I like I I'm, Seven is basically not quite his first but i feel like it's the first where fincher like nailed his style like before this he did like alien 3 which is like whatever that's like a that's a well documented mm-hmm. disaster didn't he, do, didn't he do the dark knight no that no. wasn't him okay sorry no he's done he's done fight club uh Panic oh okay Room, yeah 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 I've uh, seen that. girl yeah. the dragon tattoo the american version uh, okay. the social network and okay. um gone girl he also did the first episode of House of Cards, so Kevin Spacey. It all Into comes it. together. Yeah, and like, yeah, Kev- Kevin Spacey uh, killed it in the movie too. And that's that's probably my favorite scene in the movie is when he walks in slowly. He's like, you know, very saucy, like detective, detective, yeah. detective, and they're just like totally ignoring Not him. It's yeah. Amazing, so creepy. Yeah. So um, yeah, seven gets a thumbs up. 
it gets a thumbs, thumbs up. up. I'm glad. I was um, I was pretty worried. I didn't think you'd like it. No, I liked it. it I enjoyed it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's. Uh, out of all the, I I I, I want to like rank all the movies that you've made me watch. Maybe sure, do a quick rank. Maybe one day. Well, no, I I I don't know. If well, it's on I, my head, what but. you've got Rambo is obviously first, and then I after that I'd probably well, say Fargo. I don't know. I think. Well, I I, I might put Fargo over Rambo. Really? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Over First Blood. First Blood. Yeah, I always say Rambo. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And then you know whatever. But um. But yeah, uh, definitely, it, uh, probably not one of the best, but I, I liked it, and you should definitely watch that movie. Cool. So thumbs um, up for this, yeah. for that one. Fincher's cool. awesome. He's one and, of my favorite directors. Any other last words about uh, Seven before we uh, move on? Yeah, I could keep going on, but I'll I'll stop it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah, so once again, uh, use the code uh, what's in the box at store.deathwishing.com and get 10% off your next order. one word? One word, all, one, all one word. One word. Okay, cool. No uh, apostrophe, cool. so no apostrophe S, yes, just what's. Cool. All, All right, right, you ready for next week, Rich? I got something special oh, yeah. for well, you. So what are we doing next week? You're doing something, well, let's say you're going to take me out. You're going to take me out on the night on the town. We're going to see Mad Max, Fury Road. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Well, you're, you'll see. You've never heard of Mad Max, Mel Gibson? I think I've, yeah, I think I've heard of that. There's a, there's Isn't there a, a poster huge, in the office somewhere? There is a huge poster in the office. I've never seen it. Now, I'm going to try to get you to watch the first three Mad Max leading up to this. I know that's not going to happen, but Which I'm going to Which one try. am I watching? We're going to go to the theater. It's, there's a new Mad Max coming out. Oh. And I oh. hear it's awesome, and it looks awesome. We're going to do like a I'm brand pumped. new movie. Exactly. You've been asking for a modern movie. Seven was not quite it, but we're going right. to go see Mad Max. Where are we going to go see it? Wherever's close, I don't care. Um, are you gonna buy me popcorn? No, you're gonna buy me popcorn. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Yes, we will go see that. Uh, yeah. Okay, then we'll go see that next week. Uh, Chris, Chris, I'm ready for the tour. It's tour time with Chris Martin. Awesome. Uh, Mark, can you bring me in? Mark's a fucking mess right now. He's like sneezing. <laughs> like, what is he? He's doing I really, that? I really don't feel good at all. I Mark? just feel like this weird, like, monkey that you guys just, like, crank in the back and, like, do the fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is a disaster. He, yeah. I don't know if he's going to make it. He's just falling apart. Oh. Um, Mark, well, I, don't, about, I think we might, we might have to skip the intro this week. I'll do wow. it for you, Mark. How All does right. that sound? All right, Caleb. Oh, that sucked. That wasn't as good as Mark's. Yeah, that was See, Mark? Kinda weak. See, Can Mark? You? See what I do for you? Yeah. It's not well, the same. You have to do it. Okay. All right. Oh, you want me to do it? No, you'd have to do it now. Wait for next week. I mean, week. I, I want you to do it, but... I mean, if you don't want to do it, I guess you don't have to, but... Chris, tell us about those Chris tours. Tor- <laughs> okay. All right, so got a couple new tours going on. Uh, Code Orange is heading to Europe and the UK uh, this June, starting June 6th through June 21st. Uh, so, yeah, check them out. Um fucked up uh just got announced to play berserk town festival in la and that's uh august 15th uh with the mob career suicide and a bunch more um that festival goes for like three days it starts uh august 14th and it goes through uh the 16th so uh, a couple reminders uh blood fest is coming up soon uh make sure to grab your tickets uh, that's May 23rd in Michigan. Uh, Death Wish Festival uh, Europe is happening soon. That starts on May 30th through June 5th. Uh, check our news section that has like all the the links to each show, uh, like where to get the tickets and and whatnot. So so definitely check that out. Uh, that wraps it up with the uh, tours. Uh, for for more info. Uh, and updates, please visit deathwishinc.com slash tours. Cool. Yeah, and if you're going to uh, Bloodfest, you'll see uh, see Caleb and Mark and possibly Chris there. Uh, uh, come bring s- come a- say hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give them, uh, bring them, make them a cake or something. Make them some cupcakes. Oh my yeah, god, you can yeah. Tell us how much you like Death Talk and 
and yeah. you know, how yeah. I'm your favorite and you know just stuff like that you yeah, can put see some, um, put some arsenic Caleb's giant in that head in person yeah yeah if you I want mean, you, won't you be can able sign to see my anything big head. else because yeah. you know, you'll just see his head but but yeah uh, <laughs> yeah just so uh, mad at me right now just a little disclaimer though like if you do come say hi like i'm gonna be a fucking scumbag so <laughs> he'll steal your wallet <laughs> yeah he will, he will so. don't get too close though because his skin will be really sunburned yeah that too <laughs> yeah yeah and i'll probably Possibly be i'll sweaty. probably uh be blasting some nickelback from behind the table that's what you do yeah, yeah. you know painting a picture for you oh and also if you shake my hand like it might be covered in sweat because i sweat so much you know yeah he's kind of clammy kind of clammy but i sense some sarcasm in uh sarcasm me none <laughs> caleb wonder what's funny is all those things people probably forgot about and then you just brought it back <laughs> in the light dude. Uh, <laughs> that was way back in like episode two yeah man we're on 17 a lot of things happened yeah. Since then, people forget. It's okay, Caleb. Ought oh, to be seventeen again, right, right, boys? Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, boys. Right, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Well, it's time for uh, it's time for questions. <laughs> so we've got um, some great questions this we week. Did. You guys, uh, thanks for sending in your questions, and we actually got some uh, we got some voicemails this week, and I'm psyched on that. So, if you want to participate in the show, use the hashtag AskDeathTalk Death Talk on Twitter, email us DeathTalk at DeathWitchInc.com, or uh, the latest is calling the hotline, so uh, call 754-70-DETALK, that's 754-703-8255. Uh, yeah, and just leave your uh, first name where you're from, and we'll uh, play your message on the show like we're going to do right now. So uh, yeah, let's start. Let's start with the uh, let's start with the phone calls because we got a couple this week and uh, and I want to I want to play the messages now. So uh, first one's from uh, Colton from Texas. Hey, this is Colton from Texas, and I have two questions. One, what's the record that got each of you into heavy music? And two, is it worth it to still send a physical press kit to a label, or do y'all not care about things like that? Thanks. Bye. All right. So, uh, yeah, Colton wants to know, um, he has two questions. Uh, is it worth, was it, is it worth it to send physical press kits anymore? Um, we don't get too many anymore. Do Once we in a them? very blue moon. And I, yeah. I don't want to like discourage anybody, but press kits, they're just coming to me. So I'll listen to it, but I can't sign you. <laughs> yeah um is it worth it no i mean look I, I i probably have to tell you uh i don't think we've ever worked with a band that sent in a demo or anything like that um i could be wrong but i don't think we ever have uh not to say that we don't listen to them because we do actually chris don't you do you monitor the the demos at deathwishing.com uh no that's actually caleb's job that's caleb okay uh, caleb yeah, does yeah. that yeah so yeah, I, caleb, I do listen to everything yeah we listen to it and you know, uh, we always want to give things a shot, but look, again, most of the time, I think we've talked about this in previous episodes, just keep playing shows, uh, keep uh, keep getting better, keep uh, keep practicing. Um, if you're a good band, someone will notice and something will happen. Uh, it it yeah. usually happens pretty organically. Yeah, I feel like if, if you just work hard and, and, you know, just keep playing shows and, and you know, you'll do fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how you get noticed is is just working hard and, and playing shows. So that being it. said, um someone did send a plant in a press kit before and I still have <laughs> I still have that plant. I I potted him. His name is Groot. And are you, are you didn't mad the about dirt that? get all over your desk and stuff? Oh, I was ve- I was very mad when I opened it cuz soil went all over my desk, but now I'm very happy cuz I have a plant friend. And plants are the best friends because you know they don't like they don't talk, they just like they just kind of sit there. Did did you just say that you soiled your desk? I I've soiled my desk many times here. Oh, so gross. <laughs> that's that's Damn why it. it always smells a little little off in his office. <laughs> I smell like a peach, and everybody knows it. Oh God! Uh, yeah, Anyways. weird, weird, a weird Caleb segment brought to you by uh, Nature Box. 
<laughs> nature box. I forgot about those sea salt pop pops. Oh, mm-mm. yeah, that thing we don't get anymore. Because no one ate it. Yeah. yeah what, well, the thing is, they kept sending the like the shitty snacks that no one likes. That was cr- that was good for you, Chris, because you just wouldn't even bring lunch. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. We are, we're getting so it's sidetracked. It's provided by work. What was the first know? part of that? question what it was the was the record that like got you into hardcore was that it oh sorry yeah we, we i forgot to mention yeah i don't i don't want to shortchange colton here yeah um i didn't want to miss the uh second part of this uh of this question thanks for reminding me caleb here uh the 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 record that got you into heavy music actually i think i have a pretty good story about this uh i, I guess I'll, I'll start if you guys don't have anything um I'm going to go way back. I'm going to go like, I think I was in like second, third, fourth grade around there. Um, a friend of mine who I'm still friends with to this day, he's my best friend. Um, we were in elementary school and uh, I remember when I met him, uh, my friend John, uh, we we were in the bathroom. <laughs> we, were at, like, we were at like the urinals like next to each other and and we kind of, we knew each other but like didn't really, you know, we knew each other from the class or whatever. Uh, but he said to me, we're just like kind of sitting there peeing. And uh, he says, uh, yo, do you want to come over to my house and what, and uh, listen to Aerosmith? Yes. And I said, and I was like, I didn't really know who Aerosmith was. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And and he, he kind of, like, he, I think he asked me, like, do you like Aerosmith? And then he's like, and I was like, yeah, I like Aerosmith. But I didn't, I didn't really know who they were. I just kind of said it to kind of like sound cool, you know, like that I knew who Aerosmith was. But, um. He had a lot of older brothers, so, like, he was into, like, cooler stuff than I was. I didn't really know any of this stuff. But, yeah, we went over his house, uh, I think maybe sometime that week. Maybe it was that day. And we listened to uh, Permanent Vacation. And that's, I'm going to say that actually got me into, like, rock music, which, you know, eventually, yeah, you know, got you into other things. So, uh, but, yeah, Aerosmith's uh, Permanent Vacation got me into uh, heavy music. Solid. Yeah, I can see the trajectory right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Steven Tyler just helped yeah. me get into hardcore. Now he's now he's a dried up grape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Aerosmith really, really to strange, uh, but... to Corn to Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, Weezer. Qu- a quick little stained sidetrack, and then you know, then on back on to Weezer. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what? Is that how you went? Oh yeah, that was that was actually. No, um, probably my parents, my my uh, my mom and dad listened to some sick stuff. Uh, so my parents were never into like really. They didn't like music. Oh, that's a bummer. My my parents like like a lot of classic rock. Like my dad and I would listen to B fifty twos when he drove me to the bus stop. That was awesome. That's not classic rock, but so like that was an example of like B fifty twos. And then like my mom loved Deep Purple. And Black Sabbath. Wow, you had cool parents. Yeah, they they cool. <laughs> they cool. Gra- and Grandma, Elton John, and Willie Nelson. Nice. Those are her faves. Yeah, I kind of. I, I, your mom. I mean, your grandmother likes cattle decapitation too, right? Yeah, she's she's a big gore grind fan. <laughs> <laughs> Just like she she. Um, I'll link in the in the show notes. She she made a YouTube video. I showed her how to use YouTube. Um, she used a, a top ten brutal gore grind breakdowns. <laughs> I'll link. I'll link to it. It's pretty sick. <laughs> uh, Mark, what what got you into? Uh, I'm gonna guess some ska band got you into. It. <laughs> and <laughs> what? How Mark's in the offensive? hot seat this week. I, no, I, I liked That's... my fair share of ska when I was younger. Um, yeah. I guess that was got me into liking like I don't know music with distorted guitars but uh the first time i listened to like heavy music was a band that i didn't really like later on but there was kids that went to my high school that were like seniors when i was in eighth grade and they were in a band from worcester called i rise and they put out a demo i remember that. yeah they put out a demo i think it was like 2006 or something and my brother was friends with them and i remember listening to it uh with him and i remember thinking it was like cool that people I knew were in a band and I actually like thought that was the first time I 
my brother listened to hardcore and stuff, and I never really got it. And that was the first time I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then it sort of sort of went from there. Oh. Yeah, I remember that band. They put out a record on uh, 1917, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Dude, Chris, what about you? Uh, Mine would have to be uh, Metallica. Because I had like an yeah. uncle that liked that like sort of like metal. Everyone uh, had that uncle, I think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, he's always like the younger one, like the younger uncle. Uh, but yeah, he like I remember he he was like watching like a Metallica music video. I think it was like Enter Sandman, and it was like <laughs> they're like in the like insane asylum, and it was like just a crazy video. And I like remember being young and just like watching that and i was like what the fuck is this and like that's like pretty much like my gateway into aggressive music so speaking of metallica i had to drive my dad's truck over the weekend somewhere i turned it on metallica was blasting go so dad sick. like he had the cd in there i don't i don't know what it was i don't even remember the song but i just remember, uh, it wasn't like, on like it was wasn't like, on like the radio yeah. or something it probably was the radio oh, okay, okay cool um, next up is uh, that was a good question. Thank you, Colton from Texas. Uh, thanks yeah, for calling. Thanks, in. man. Um, Jonathan from New Jersey. Let's hear what he has to say. Death talk. Hi, my name is Jonathan. I'm from New Jersey, and my question for you guys is: Which concert was most memorable to you? All right. So, which concert was most memorable to you, Caleb? I bet you have like a good one. Um, my first Ozfest. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I remember because my mom took me and a bunch of my dumb friends, and she was just miserable the whole time. Thanks, oh, mom. Oh, she like stayed there and like yeah, hung yeah, because she was like, I know, it must it have all, been the worst. It was all new metal freaks, and she was probably like, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, thanks, mom. That was awesome. Oh, that was the worst. And then I think, it'd be like, I think like it was two thousand eight. Like, I remember going to those things when I was kids, when I was like, you know, when, when I was younger. And uh, wait, not two thousand eight. I have no idea when it was. <laughs> that was two thousand fourteen. No, yeah, it was last year. Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, I remember going. And you, there'd be like a group of like awkward, like there'd be like an awkward parent group in the back, and like they'd mm-hmm. all just be like talking shit about their kids. They're like I can't believe they listen to this stuff. Oh, this is boring. Like, I'll look uh, at them with their fucking masks. Yeah. Look at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so there'd always be that group of parents like in the back, like hanging out, and yeah, yeah. Uh, memorable for me. Uh, that's 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 tough. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but the Hatebreed music video shoot was like, Hell I, yeah. I was, I loved it. I, I, I just remember that, that, that show so, so vividly. So I had a good time at that when they shot, um, I will be heard. Uh, I've seen American nightmare. That was like my first hardcore show. Uh, when they played, uh, like a VFW hall in, in Waltham, Massachusetts, uh, saw that, that changed everything for me. So, uh, that was that was pretty memorable too. And that was I, man, I don't remember what that was. I was probably in high school, sixteen years old or something like that. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was awesome for me. Good choice. Can I also add, um, like my first local show, I believe was at this little coffee shop in Westchester, uh, Pennsylvania, called Fenarios. It's like a coffee shop, and then upstairs they would have shows. Um, that was fun memories Who there um pucker up velcro lips i like <laughs> they were a what? local band at the time <laughs> I, it's gonna be an a awesome bunch of name. bands no one's no one knows but it was just like it was like friends of mine at at the time it was awesome cool i bet i bet i bet chris went to like i don't know I, okay. <laughs> what, what was your what most do you, what do you one? think what do you think it was I don't know. Did you? Oh yeah, let's see, like, all guess Chris's I, first. I bet it was like Wu Tang Clan or something like that. Uh no. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> for, for a concert, uh, I went to shows before I actually went to like a concert. My first concert was actually uh, brand new. They were playing in uh, Lowell, and yeah, I don't remember who they played with, but I remember uh, losing my shoe. <laughs> I didn't really know. You were like, that guy? You stage yeah, died? Yeah, well, I didn't know it was really that, like, crazy. You know, the song of Serena? And I was just kind of, like, standing there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't think of the name of the place, but yeah. Um, 
yeah, that was my first concert. Uh, I went to shows before that, uh, like local shows and stuff. But, but yeah, that was my first actual concert. Mark, we didn't we didn't do. What you was yet. it? It was most memorable concert you've been to. Yeah, most yeah. most memorable. Um, yeah, maybe it was that. What was that? What was that concert that you went to where you were up were up on stage? Oh, As the well, Temptations. <laughs> Temptations. Yeah, that was cool. But since I already talked about that, the one that always comes to my my mind is when I, I think it was the first time I saw Saves the Day when they played in Worcester in 2007, and they played it an hour and a half, all requests. They were just oh, sort of wow. like, "What do you want to hear?" There was just kids every... screaming, and he was like, "All right, cool, that one." They opened up with like a song from Can Slow Down. I was in heaven. It was fucking awesome. I'm pretty sure every Saves the Day show is a request fest. Yeah, like, it's it, awesome. It, 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 it's kind of annoying. Well, like people just yell out songs to play, but like, you well, know dude, what I mean? they, the other times I've no, seen they probably, them, they've they like probably... had like a, a strict sort of thing, and they'll play things. They'll like. Uh, throw things in here and there but this was truly like oh yeah, yeah. they open up with something they didn't ask and after every song they're like what do you want to hear and they're like cool that one and then they're like asking around in the band do you guys know it and then they played it it was awesome <laughs> that's cool that's cool um awesome uh thanks again thanks keep uh keep those messages coming we love them it's a it's a easy way to uh, ask your question so yeah if you want to call in just uh call Seven five four seven zero three eight two five five. That's will be in the show notes. Everything like that. Uh, we have one from Twitter from our good old friend Greg. He wants to know. Um, hey guys, I got a question. Why is Trey against doing ten inch vinyl? Call him. <laughs> we should just call um, him. Do it. Out. I'd I'd love to know the answer to that. I don't I don't really know why he uh, is against it. Um, because they're goofy. I couldn't tell you. He just doesn't like it. He just doesn't want to do it. Same so, with picture it, discs. The uh, the format offends him. I don't know why, call, but it does. Call Maybe him. it just looks weird on your on your shelf. I mean, if you just call it, it does look weird on the shelf. Out. It does. It doesn't really fit. Like it's just like, okay, here's a bunch of other like twelve inch records. Oh, yeah. It looks like, like it's like you know two no. inches shorter than the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really fit in. You have to, you you have to put it in uh, your uh, own section, in its own section. Yeah. And they can't go with the seven inches because then they're way too big. So what Do is they this? even make ten inch poly ten bags? No, you have to fold the twelve inch one over. They probably make ten inch ones, but yeah, no, they do. I, I'm they sure they do, do but yeah, they, we yeah, don't we don't have them. I feel like so. no one buys them. They just like use the twelve inch ones and fold them but um, yeah i think t- i don't know i i think anything i mean personally i'm just like if it's not a seven inch or a 12 inch like uh it's it's like weird to to, to put into your collection it's like you don't know where to put it it's just it's just inconvenient let's get rid of it and like no one no one presses 10 inch vinyl either so like it we never have like a lot of them so like i don't know we don't need it it doesn't need its own section or, or anything like that yeah, I think people like want like they want to do something different, and they're like, "Yeah, let's do a ten inch." Yeah, and then you're just like, "Oh, I have a ten inch." <laughs> guys, let's let's talk about those five inches. Oh, the, yeah, that was a weird too. But are, whatever, it, are... it's it's like it's fine. It's fine. Hey, everyone, it's uh, everyone has their own thing. They want to do what they want. That's fine. that's cool. That's fine with me. But uh, yeah, thank you. Maybe uh. Maybe we'll uh, we'll get Trey to answer that question for us. Uh, we got an email as well, and this is from Sean Perry. And thank you, Sean Perry, for uh, sending over this link. He sent me a link <laughs> to IMDb uh, and said, uh, "Somewhere Rich is smiling." And this link <laughs> goes to the information about Independence Day Two. Dude, I My fucked up. That should have been the first. Time. That should have been the first film we we saw in the theater. Now, did you guys take a look at this yet? Did you guys take a look at the cast? The casting no. for this. No. Re- read it off to us. Well, there's an issue here. <laughs> no, uh, no, you got you got your usuals. You got your Jeff Goldblums, your Vivica A. Foxes. <laughs> so, Caleb, there's an issue. What is that issue, Rich? Um. I don't see Will Smith on the list. 
Will Smith? Who's that? <laughs> Only the greatest actor of all time. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Independence Day 2 will not be the same if Will Smith is not in it. Like, come on. Yeah, Welcome he to has Earth. to be in there somewhere. I don't, who is this Liam Hemsworth guy? Who is this guy? Oh, God. It's Chris Hemsworth's brother. Get out of here. Who is he? Thor's brother. Oh, I don't, I've never seen that. Avi. He's uh, in Hunger Games. He's your favorite... In your favorite movie, your second oh, really? favorite movie, he's, he's other... Katniss's uh, boyfriend, the blonde oh. one. Not they're both there, blonde shit. There's this uh, other actress, Mike. Uh, Mike is it Micah Monroe? Is that her name? Oh, I think she was the girl in uh, It Follows. No, oh, but anyways, um, it's gonna be a big disappointment if if uh, yeah, Will like, Smith is not in the movie, dude. If you can't get Will, don't make the movie. Not at all. So, uh, Sean, Sean Perry, thank you for uh, sending in that link. Uh, I'm very excited. I heard it was getting made, but I didn't know there was uh, any information about it. But I still thought you. it was a rumor, so thanks for yeah. clearing that up. All right, well, Independence Day 2. And, Rich, I just want to point out, it's not too late. He Will Smith might join. I hope he does, because I my, my, my boycott it. Uh, Caleb, are you gonna order the uh, Independence Day uh, Blu-rays for the store? Um, I'll, I'll work. I'll work that out. I'll see what All I right, can great. do. Yeah, yeah, great, great. So, the um, uh, the the double LP 180 gram soundtrack is is in ooh, the. Oh, that's actually a good one. Who has has anyone done? Is Mondo gonna do the Independence Day soundtrack? That that'd be cool. If Mondo did it, I would be into I'll it. I'll buy one of those. <laughs> it's gonna be a die cut. Um, so you slide the insert in, and it's an alien. On yeah, the, uh, inner and the thing explodes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. Uh, all right, and, and then you it. open it up, and it's Will Smith punching you in the face, saying "Welcome to Earth." Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so that's it for uh, for uh, all your questions and feedback. Uh, thanks for sending them in. Uh, we got uh, one more one more thing before we uh, head out here. Uh, we just want to talk about what we're into this week. Uh, Caleb, I heard you saw a movie. Well, Rich, I, I saw a little a little movie people might movies, have heard though. of, uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. It's like a little indie thing I, I saw in you know small run theater nearby. Now I've heard a lot of reviews that this movie's like really bad. That's incorrect. That's okay, so wrong. Right. Yeah, I don't. I, I know. It, I'm not it's a no good one, movie. I'm no one to judge. Obviously. Now I will say, my my fanboyism aside, um, I got more enjoyment out of the first Avengers. And I have like a, I have a, I don't want to go on. I have a few issues with Age of Ultron, but overall, it's an awesome movie, and you, you, you got to see it. I, uh, I, I kind of turned the first one off, basically a minute into it. I wasn't into it. Yeah, I know. Uh, wrong again. It was boring to me, so I just turned it off. <sighs> <laughs> I hate, I hate you so much. Oh, jeez. Uh, anything else, Caleb? Oh yeah, Le- uh, Led Zeppelin. I'm just. Just into that, just yeah, just that summer out. summer vibes. I've just been listening to classic rock. All Are you gonna day, put a song day. on the playlist? I think I did. Was yeah. It? Oh, last week you did, right? I think uh, communication breakdown. Okay. Yeah. So okay, Led cool. Zeppelin, Credence, Deep Purple. It's been a good week. <laughs> Mark, uh, Chris, anything uh, anything to tell us this week? Uh, I've been playing uh, a new game of D and D. Yeah, I want to make fun of me for it. Ultra nerding. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. What's your character's name, and what is your character? I'm not going to disclose that information. Are you serious? Don't bring it up, then. It's fun, okay? Just just let me live. Let me live, guys. Come on. I am. I want to know more. I'm into it. You don't want to share anything. Uh, okay, I'll disclose what I am. I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> Ranger. Yeah, so, uh... Thought, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. What are you guys what, doing? Don't you want to let the Death Talk fans play with you online? Yeah, I thought it was... You can't play online. You play with, like, a group of people. Yeah, it's, it's like... A, um, oh, I've never played that game. Rich, sorry. have you ever have you played like, games that aren't on a computer screen? <laughs> they're in real life. They're lots of fun. You use dice... And cars. Oh, that's, hang not, out with that's not a vi- that's not a video game, 
Rich, you hang out with people. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't know anything about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it's not a video. I thought it was a. I thought it was a video game. No, no. Uh, you basically just. I don't know. I don't know if you anyone's ever played like Munchkin. It's kind of like Munchkin is awesome. Yeah, it's a great game. D and D. Well, it Munchkin is Munchkin like, like a D&D dumbed down except, version yeah. of D and D. So, well, that that's too much human inter- human interaction for myself, but. <laughs> Uh, Rich, you've never heard of D anD D, and you've never. No, played I, it. I, I think I knew that. I, you know, what? I was thinking of uh, World of Warcraft. Oh, I kind of um, got them mixed uh, up. That's like a card the one thing we're too, playing right? right now, it's very similar to um, like Skyrim, like that. Oh, sort uh-huh. of like a realm of of things. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's kind of like that. All right, cool, cool. And I know a lot of people like Skyrim, so I'm into that. Uh, into that new ceremony record. So good. The L shaped man. It's streaming now i think i listened to it three times in a row really into it i like it a lot go uh go pick it up we actually have a pre-order going right now and it's gonna be shipping out soon right yep so yeah go pick it up it's awesome uh they 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 just seem to kind of reinvent themselves every record and uh i like i like this reinvention yeah this is one of my my favorite reinventions or whatever you want to call it of theirs (laughs) i like it a lot cool uh, Mark, are you into sneezing this week? Yeah, just today. I, I'm like holding it. It's taking everything in me to hold this back. My nose is tickling <laughs> so right. bad. I think we got. I think we're gonna end the podcast. Mark, did Mark, you get that so. couch last night? I actually did. Bought a couch last night. I became an adult last night. There we go. Not. Oh, nice. Bernie and Phil's. Bernie and Phil's. Bernie and Phil's. That's nice. Bow. No. Is that where Bob's you got it from? Discount furniture, dog. <laughs> This episode is actually uh, sponsored yeah. by them. So. By shout out, shout out to Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to leave Phil one day. Or is Phil the woman? Phil's a woman. Phyllis. Yeah, Phil. Short Phyllis. For Phyllis. Whatever. Yeah, I'll go yeah. with Bernie. <laughs> um, I'll just have a weekend at Bernie's. Um, sorry, guys. Okay. Um, Speaking of which, Dick and June's today? Me, you, you, me? Yeah, yeah maybe the cream would Hell suffice yeah. to get rid of all get these cream. sneezing. But hey, I just want to say that I like uh, I've been listening to the, the new Best Coast album like every day. Never listened to Best Coast before no, yeah. and listened to the record. It's called California Nights. It's the best record to listen to as it's getting warm out. You're just getting good vibes listening to this, listening in the sunshine. Yep. Very cool. Well, uh, Mark, why don't you go get medicated and uh, get that all cleared up? Yeah, Can I drink clarity. NyQuil and then operate heavy machinery? Hell yeah! Yes, yeah, yeah. We don't pay attention to OSHA. If you drink, here. if you drink enough uh, Nyquil, will I be able to forget my feelings? <laughs> that's some sad. That's some sad. <laughs> that's really I'm just sad. kidding. Uh, Come on. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks for <laughs> listening. Uh, again, <laughs> you can subscribe to our podcast. Uh, just search Death Wish Inc. in your prefer- preferred podcast app. Uh, or go to iTunes. Uh, if you're in iTunes and you like the show, just give us a rating. Uh, it, it helps with things. And uh, <laughs> you can also listen to this on YouTube. If you are listening there, just subscribe to our channel. And you'll get the updates uh, whenever we put up a new episode. Uh, but uh, thanks for listening. And uh, have a wonderful, wonderful future ahead <laughs> of you. And Mark's going to go. Uh, Mark's going to go lay down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>